Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Local Leaders, the podcast. And I have two gentlemen across from me, Scott Beatty and Scott Huffman. First of all, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us, Jim. I'm fired up to talk to y'all about one thing in particular, and that's podcasting, something I know a little bit about. A lot of bit. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of bit. I like that. Mm-hmm. I, Use it. That should be on a if T-shirt. If you get paid a from it, holler bit. at me. I like it. I like I'm coining that phrase. Mm -hmm. So y'all are host of P2P, Penitentiaries to Penthouses. It is a podcast that has gained a lot of traction, not here, not only here locally, but really uh, different spots around the country. The way I know that is I see your analytics Mm -hmm. and I see that that you're getting views all over uh, the United States, even a couple other countries. And so today we're going to do a little bit of promoting for your podcast and telling everybody it's out there you just finished up season one of p2p correct which was amazing you film it right here at envision podcast studio shout out to envision podcast studio whoop, whoop. i know there's big Jim. Jim. i know big him well Jim. uh so first of all let's talk premise let's talk about what p2p is about how it came about and how you two both came became involved in it so whoever wants to take that question um so for years now i have wanted to do uh, a podcast sent well let me let me let me back up a little back bit. up scott as, as a as a formerly incarcerated person, uh, I, you know, I was connected to the Department of Correction for 12 years in total, five in prison and the rest on probation and parole at various times. The recurring theme that I, I saw a lot was like people have this like this idea of what a person coming from prison or the system looks like or what they're supposed to be or how they are or this fear, you know, because a predisposition, predisposition um, of what we are like. So the media does a good job of when you commit a crime, you get posted on the news, but there's no follow up stories. Right. So when I was in prison, I had a predisposition just based on media of what prison was going to be like. Now it is rough. It is a terrible place to be in certain respects. But the humans that I met there weren't what I thought they were going to be. The guys that I finally made my way to hanging around and associate myself when I started to change. I got guys that are there that are getting master's degrees, bachelor's degrees, PhDs, doctorates, and all these different things. They were monumental in my transformation and molded me into a I am today and talented smart eloquent just overall good people right so come home and uh you know as a person who had challenges when they came home i also got connected to the reentry community and i'm i'm seeing these guys that are trying to get a leg up in life and then i start meeting like formerly incarcerated people that have been home a long time and they're super successful i'm like wow mm. you know as i'm gaining traction in my career at the time I'm seeing these other people, people that I was incarcerated with, running nonprofits, getting degrees, doing all of these things. I'm like, you know what? We got to, because people would come up to me and they're like, what did you go to prison for? And they're like, oh, you know, it's like you're the big bad wolf, right? It's like, man, we got to change the perception. We got to change the the status quo of what people think about us when we come home. So my thought for these years was like, man, we got to, bring on successful formerly incarcerated people who have changed their lives, who have a, a crazy wild story, but they also have a story of redemption. They also have a story of like anything's possible when you want it to happen. So, you know, for nine years, I sat on the idea, toyed around with it, didn't really know how to, how to create a, I'm not a tech guy. Right. So probably last year I reached out to, a local guy here, Brandon Brown, and he had a podcast, and I was on his podcast. And uh, uh, after that, I was like, man, you know, I really want to do this. So I actually, Scott had just moved back from Georgia. Me and Scott grew up together. Okay. And uh, Scott went to Georgia to do real estate. Scott's not formally incarcerated, but he's got a personality. <laughs> Let's make that clear. I've, 
He's, the, a, he's a square, y'all. I'm the other viewpoint. Yeah, I'm so, asking the hard hitting <laughs> questions I, that most of the listeners yeah, want right. to ask. Because, like, I speak prison jargon. He does. So if me and, let's say, Jim was formerly incarcerated. Jim did like three hours before or something. Right? <laughs> um, like, I would be in dialogue with him, and I'm using penitentiary words, not thinking, like, Scott doesn't know what a Jose is. or yeah. what, You know, all these different. So Scott asks questions, but also he's got a personality, right? People yeah. gravitate towards him. And so when he moved back, he's got the same level of energy that I have, though, like just in life, not just with podcasts, but like in work and career and all these different things. It's like, you know, we need to link up. Talk to him about the ideas. He's like, let's do it. Yeah. So then I called Brandon. I was asking him, can I rent a space? And at the time, he was transitioning from his building to where mm-hmm. he was. At. He was like, but they got a guy. And his name is Jim. Oh, is that Jim's origin story? The heavens parted. And, oh. So the Red Sea, actually, I was sitting at the Red Sea and it opened up. And Jim was standing <laughs> at the other side of it. And I said, Come to me, my child. <laughs> Whatever. And I, I walked and Jim was like, bright. Jim said, God told me you wanted to do a podcast. <laughs> That's right. So, I mean, here we are. And here we are. Yeah. And no, so, but anyway, so I called Jim and... Um, but the story from the Red Sea is actually true. Uh, I called Jim and um, I told him what I wanted. He's like, "Man, come see me." And look, here we are today, doing yeah. season two. Yeah, and I and I'll say this: uh, you know, um, uh, you're absolutely right about the perception. And look, I'm sure you would agree with me when I say there's some people in this world that probably don't need to be out, and there's some people that do. You know, that feel it in their heart and they're, they're, uh, I don't know if you use the word repentant on their actions, but, uh, you know, they're completely different people now and, and they deserve a second chance. And so that's, um, something that when you did your first podcast, I realized because I, I had a preconception notion that, Especially people that done hard time, oh, right? A bunch of thugs coming in hard Jim's time. podcast. Yeah, today. I mean, I, well, I just it's hard to understand that those people can change after mm-hmm. that amount of time. And I've seen it. I've met some of these individuals, and and uh, and they are they're changed people, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, if nothing else, what you get out of your podcast, in my opinion, is uh, some stories that number one uh, are inspiring. Um, number two or raw that's one thing i really love about y'all's podcast is it's raw it's for the most part unscripted things can be said that you don't see coming yeah and it's it's entertaining if nothing else i'm sure like you you and i have like a, it's like we're like a fly on the wall listening to them because they'll go into stories and it's like they're there talking about like yeah. the experience that's right that's exactly right and now scott b uh, who is known as your best friend in real estate? Shout out! <laughs> and when he's not when he's not uh, talking on a podcast, he he does. He sells real estate here locally. Yes, sir. Uh, Across the uh, Louisiana. That's state it. Line. That's it. And and he would. So I'll throw a little plug out and appreciate it. And uh, say hey, if you're looking for a real estate agent, Scott B. He'll be, uh, do, do you have a slogan or anything? Well, your best yeah, friend in real best estate. best friend in real yeah. estate, the bad boy of real estate, Louisiana's <laughs> favorite boy. realtor. I got all of them, Jim. <laughs> when he was in high school, Instant Messenger was popular, AOL. It's like text message for the internet for all the young girls. So right. I, his, Insta, his AOL Instant Messenger name was Bout It Baby because yeah. Master P and then was blowing up at the time. Mm, yeah. It's always bad. something bad. catchy. So it was Master Bout It Baby. P. One thing that like I appreciate about the podcast is the fact that like just coming in from not knowing really much of anything about prison, incarcerated individuals, besides what we see and hear about on the news and on TV. But like everybody likes a, a success story, but everybody loves like a second chance, like a bounce back story. Redemption. You know? yeah, yeah. The redemption story is like my favorite aspect of it because it's wild. We're talking to people that have been in jail sometimes 30 years. Yeah. Sometimes with like Mr. Arthur was forty. Yeah, yeah, no luck of getting out. By the way, like, life like, sentence. Like life sentence. You're staying. You're stuck in Angola. By the way, if you're from Louisiana, you know about it. I'm sure a lot of people know about it. Up War, there. All when you get a country. life sentence in Louisiana, you got life means life. life. Yeah, yeah you're stuck. And some of these people are finding out the news while they're legit in a cotton field or some wild, crazy story like that, where somebody just nudges them like, "Hey." You've been paroled, I guess, or like you. you you're well, a lot papers. of times, what happens is uh, 
every year, and this is part of some of the work that I do, but I go to the state capitol usually in, in the March and in or April, sometimes through May, to uh, to lobby for legislation. So every year, different nonprofits in Louisiana, I particularly work with the Justice and Accountability Center, but we go to the capitol advocating for criminal legal reform, whether it's with uh, legislation to that affects lifers, right? Running Giving for politics, bro? What's going on? One day, maybe. Like no. Um but so, you know, legislation that will affect people that have life sentences and give them parole dates, right? Just how Andrew got out with the Montgomery Miller thing. I mean, he had a Dude, life sentence. Check out Andrew's story. Andrew is the real life Shawshank Redemption. Well, he was life. a he was an exception because he was juvenile. Correct. When he was sentenced to well, life. that but that law wasn't always there. Like it happened because people went to the Capitol. And I mean, that's what I was trying to get at. Like, so every year legislation happens just like it does with every other bill or law that comes into effect. But so you might just be going about your business one day, like Mr. Arthur and he had a prophecy. God said, no, he was talking to somebody and they were talking about him. He signing up to do inmate counsel to fight for his case. He's like, if God wants me to come home, he'll change the law for me. A law got changed. He had life in 99 and that law affected him specifically. And mm -hmm. he came home. And that's great. And that's great. And and like we said, and look, some of the – anything you do in life, whether it's host, you know, a business podcast like I do or Bloody Angola or Real Life Real Crime Daily or what you do, you're going to have naysayers. You're going to mm -hmm. have people say, oh, uh, Scott, you glorify. You glorify crime. You, you know, you don't tell the other side of it. And – I would be the first to say, and just in knowing Scott, uh, look, their hearts always go out to victims in any situation, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, look, uh, I think uh, the reason that I don't harp on that, uh, and myself included, I've spent, and all of us have, that have been, have victims, or if you don't have victims, you spent time in prison. We've all, because we, you have like silent victims, you have like, the victims that you actually hurt physically or, or mentally or whatever, but mm -hmm. like, there's family and stuff, so those are victims too. Absolutely. So, but we've spent years, decades in remorse. Mm -hmm. It at some point or another, you move on with your life, and you've already made an amends to those people, whether it's with God, whether it's with uh, you, you know, whoever you, you 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 you've confessed that to, right? You might not have access to your victim, but you spent enough time in remorse, and and Most all people. the guys that I have on here, I can tell you one thing. They're not proud of what they did. They'll tell you every single one that I have on my podcast that has some type of violent crime. They're going to say remorseful, whether they cry about it, whether they break down, they get a little tear eye. But like, I don't, I don't want to sit here and rehash on that. Let's talk about what they're doing today. That's my philosophy. Yeah, no, and I, yeah. And, and I like that. And the people that, you know, it's important to say the people that you do have on your show, they they are remorseful. Yeah, not everybody's remorseful. No. There are some people that do things in this world that are just evil, cold people, people man. that I don't mess with. Got them. off on it and right. Yeah. That's thank I don't you. mess with them people. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, everybody who I mess with is like me, and. uh Oh Lord! Well, <laughs> to a degree, the positive quality. Yeah, the positive. <laughs> Not my negative side, but my no, positive side. Teasing. But no, just in general, man. Like I, I try to surround myself with like-minded people and people on the same path as me. Um, and if I have them on here, I've already vetted them, and I know how they are, and I know that they're good people, and I know that they are. If they have a victim of some sort, I know they're. And I don't have sex offenders on here, so when I say victims, we're no not creepers. talking about kids. We're not talking about pedophiles. Got murderers, got armed robbers, drug dealers, things like that. You'll never catch a sex offender on here. So does anybody watching, if you're tuning in, um, you can watch with confidence that I won't have sex. I just take a, a, a hard Stance line on that because on yeah. I have kids. But the right. prison world is you know, even much even guys who too, though, yeah, right? but yeah. I mean, like if you have sex charges in prison, you can count yourself good as. I'm not going to say it on here, but yeah, tuned into the podcast. We'll discuss it. Yeah. Yeah. So you finished up your first season. Number one, was it everything you thought it would be? Man, I learned a lot. Yeah. You know, I, uh, you, cause, cause just like with everything you watch podcasts, I love Joe Rogan. Like we all do. And I love Theo Vaughn. Mm. I love some of the, uh, some of the other podcasts that I watch are just like, uh, you know, um, uh, like, construction stuff you got guys mm. that are in the roof I, I like watching it because i learn a lot from them. sure but so you see those guys and i feel like 
my personality flows, but when you get on the mic or the camera and stuff, it's a whole different. It's a, it's different. Yeah, it's, it's a little intimidating at first, but I think once we caught our flow and figured out our niche, and Jim was there coaching us along. Oh, you know, there thank was, you, Jim. There's many a days where Jim was like, ah. <laughs> well, don't hit his here. table. That's we've talked yeah. about that. Don't hit like his table. Did. <laughs> <laughs> when I have a lot of nervous energy and Scott does too, yeah, but dude, I'm, I'm doing like this, my ADHDs, I'm trying to play with my phone during the middle of it. So Jim right. was monumental and, and coach was like our master home. sensei. Yeah. Master well, Splinter. and, and, and here's the thing, look, I, for your first season, you, you really killed it. You did, you did fine. And it's, it's hard, uh, from my perspective as a, as a producer of shows, one thing you have to manage more than anything else is expectation because I, I, you, you, we all see the Joe Rogans of the world. And when someone's getting a hundred downloads and Joe Rogans getting a hundred million, they can't correlate that. But there's a lot that goes behind that. Joe Rogan had a name before he ever yeah, podcasted. Yeah, I mean, he was doing his Yeah, 50,000 fans coming out the gate, comedy right? Comedy and all that. Yeah. yeah. But even, even obscure podcasters that just have a large following, there was a lot of work to get there. Uh, typically it is not a, I'm going to do six podcasts and, and, uh, turn it around to where I'm making money. You know, uh, heck I did local leaders for almost a year and a half before I ever generated a dollar out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's a process yeah. and it rewards those who show, uh, longevity and, and, uh, a mastering of the craft because it is a craft, uh, and it takes a lot of time to master it. You know, I've done 200 episodes of Local Leaders. Flex. Uh, 200 episodes. If you go back to my first 50, it's rough. It's really? rough. <laughs> in, my, in my mind, it's very rough. But somewhere along the line, I, I found a comfort zone. And and so it just takes repetition. And y'all are well ahead of where I was when I started. I'll say that. Uh, I was way rougher when I started. And your stories are absolutely unbelievable. And that's what I want to hammer down today is the big thing with P2P is the stories are real. The stories are emotional. The stories have a lot of su substance to them. And when you have that, everything else you can master as you go along, right? right. So you make my job easy in a lot of ways because sometimes – the stories aren't very interesting, and then you're you're fighting a whole another battle, which yeah. is we need to find something to grab an audience. Y'all found that very quickly. I know you were at the Bloody and Go Live, both of you, awesome. and generated a lot of mm -hmm. attention after that on your podcast. You actually, it was interesting, folks, that you could see the jump in their analytics, just like it was like a heartbeat. It just went from. Uh, so, you know, all those things work, but y'all are really killing it. And Scott B, I want to ask you. Um, you know, you were new to the podcasting game and kind of new to that type of genre mm -hmm. being that as Scott H said, you, you've never been incarcerated. So when, when you were hearing these stories, were you like me just like, wow, man, I can't believe that. In my mind, I was thinking, I hope Jim brings a bucket of popcorn for the next episode. <laughs> these things keep on getting better. I'm better. telling you. Cause like you're, I'm sure that's what I was saying. Like we're watching it and we're listening to the story. It's just like watching a movie sometimes because like if you have a like a, a good imagination you could just see like because it, it all plays out yeah you have stories we start off every single podcast where we have our guests tell a, a fantastic story and most most of these people have about 10 to 40 years worth of stories to tell yeah. so yeah. i mean i'm just, the entire time sometimes i don't even say a word just because there's nothing that I need to actually do. It's like, that was a good episode. Well, that's right. And one thing I'll say about Scott B that he's kind of a natural and, and very good at is he knows when to interject. Yeah. And uh, sometimes with podcasters, especially when there's co-hosts, you, you almost struggle with everybody trying to talk at the same time or they're interjecting at the wrong time. And he, he's pretty good with his timing on when he says things. And that's, that's something that Shout out uh, me. I didn't have to teach. So that's Shout good. out Scott Beatty. Shout good out Scotty B. But I would just very good job. I like whenever the guests get on live in the middle of the day. Oh, dude, we have Shane, people. Shane one time, he says, he's like, Whoa, what's happening? We're on live right now. <laughs> so he's, 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 we're interviewing him. We're recording it in audio and visually. And then he puts his phone on live on Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram. And so he's getting it. Um, but to kind of circle back, 
you get good stories about like high intense energy stories, and then you also get like the emotional roller coaster that our first guest on season two, episode one. That was a tear jerk. Like, yeah, like I almost cried, and I don't. I think the last time I cried was during the movie Pay It Forward. Like <laughs> Haley Joel Osment. You cried on Pay It Forward. Bro, watch it oh, again. Man. Watch it. Should I watch it? Yeah, dude, you'll cry. But <laughs> it was a story about my redemption. wife likes when I cry. And it was just a wild, it's just a good story because that was one of those situations where there something happened, he needed to, I guess, apologize for it. Powerful and, story. And then yeah. and you'll have to watch it, but it was one of those few moments when you need the story to go a little bit longer because you're about to have something in your throat and because you can't say anything. If, you, if you're a person that believes in God, I give you God goosebumps, that's for yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah, so that episode, incidentally, will be dropping the first week in April, I believe. So next week. Next week, uh, next Monday. April 1st. Yeah. yeah. April Fool's. Yeah, Fools. perfect time to drop it. Yeah. Uh, so look for that. It'll be every – look, their show is going to be every Monday – uh at uh midnight so they're gonna drop we're gonna drop a teaser you, clip whether you wake up at one o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning it'll be there when you wake up wakey wakey every monday and uh they are the p2p podcast we uh we were happy to have you on thank you for having um, us. happy to produce y'all it's 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 fun uh, you know and and with what i do and in, in the amount of time that i spend doing i want to have freaking fun man. yeah absolutely. you know what i mean so thank you for coming on the show i'm going to link all of their stuff to the uh description of the video folks so just go look go to youtube hit the bell it'll notify you every time an episode drops and you don't even have to think about it you just look at your phone that morning it'll say hey p2p just dropped a new one uh, for my audio listeners out there, same thing in the description. You're going to see everything you need to know to follow these guys and listen to these amazing stories. Any last thoughts? If you support us, we appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. And one thing, thank you, Jim, for all of your help doing oh, this. Man. If you are in the air, you want to get going with the podcast, call up Jim. He didn't tell. He didn't pay me to Holla say this. No, He's helped us out a lot. I if, if you, you. want to get it started. One free session. Well, one yeah. free session. He, he hooked us up. I'm take, I'm Sounds like an ad to me. me. Yeah, yeah. But thank you for your help, oh, Jim. Man, nothing been, to you, it. You've it's been fun. awesome. It's fun. And I want to thank all of y'all now that we're thanking everybody for listening, subscribing. Look, we're over 13,000 subscribers wow. on YouTube. We are. Numbers uh, about to go up. Just, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, we uh, can't thank y'all enough. Uh, listening supporting sharing the show a huge thing for both p2p and for local leaders of podcasts so make sure you share those shows that's the only way other people know about it and it also helps to get the name out be a friend tell a friend yeah that's right uh, write the show apple podcast uh five stars facebook wherever you listen spotify yeah five stars give a rating and uh you can put one word in there just put great you don't have to spend a whole lot of time unless you want to but i can't tell you how much that helps uh all podcasters when you do that so until next time love your community support local business and support p2p podcast and keep leading thank you very much